All right, hello, and welcome to this training. Looks like you're viewing me and not the screen that I want you to be seeing besides me. Um, so welcome to this call, welcome to this training. Glad to have you here. Uh, today we're gonna dive into the openness to learning skill. So if you look here on my screen, it says openness to learning from every interaction and life experience. So this is something that we can try on as a commitment, right? What if we gave up the need or the desire to be right? What if we stopped attaching our identity, our self-worth, our confidence on being right, being smart, you know, understanding, people agreeing with us, and all of those things, and instead, you know, you know, defending our limitations, defending our stories, defending our limiting beliefs, defending why we do things. What if instead we realized there was nothing to prove, nothing to defend, nothing to be right about, and that every single thing that happened in our life was an opportunity for learning and growth? That if your car breaks down, it's a learning opportunity. That if your computer technology is, is struggling, that it's a learning opportunity. That if you're having an argument in your relationship, that it's a learning opportunity. That if you injured yourself, that it was a learning opportunity. That if you had an accident, that it was a learning opportunity. That no matter what happened in your life, it was simply an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to expand into the next greatest version of yourself. I read a book a long time ago that said, Your purpose in life is to recreate yourself anew into the next grandest version of the greatest vision you've ever held about who you are, right? So what if we stopped thinking we needed to defend ourselves? What if we stopped thinking we needed to defend our beliefs and our stories and our actions? And instead, we realized and we came from this place of, you know what, I'm completely lovable. I'm completely whole just as I am. I don't need to try to overcompensate for anything. I don't need to try to prove anything. I don't need to have others like me or approve of me or agree with me. I don't need to, it doesn't matter who's right or who's wrong or who's the biggest victim or who's to blame. What really matters is what can I learn from this, right? So when we shift from being a victim, that life is happening to me, and I step into being a creator, that life is happening by me and for me and through me. And I take on this approach of what can I learn from everything that happens in my life? That's when life gets magical. That's when we stop, start to unwind the deep-seated patterns. That's when we start to let go of the underlying things that hold us back and keep us down. Right? So this openness to learning is on one of my top values, on the highest, highest values. It used to be, I came from a family uh, where what was modeled for me from my parents was about the furthest thing from openness to learning. You know, my dad would sit in quiet, thinking he knew it all, preaching, pushing, uh, you know, just really pushing his agenda. And when people didn't see things his way, he would get angry and mean. My mom would sit, in, and if you gave her any type of feedback whatsoever, she would, you know, blow up and get angry and frustrated. And so what was modeled for me was a lot of not openness to learning. So I've then gone on and carried that on in many ways. Give me feedback, advice, whatever. Always this wall, this defense has been the tendency. So over the years, I've been practicing openness to learning, openness to learning, opening up my body posture, breathing, trying it on. And trying it on doesn't mean that it has to be true, right? It just means it's like trying on a shirt. You put it on, and if it fits good, you keep it. And, you know, if you like it, you like how it fits, you like how it feels, you like how it looks, then you can keep it if you'd like. But if you don't like it, you don't have to keep it, right? So that's the opportunity and openness to learning is to just try it on and see what can I learn from this. It's nothing to do with blame. It's nothing to do with who's right and who's wrong. It's nothing to do with being less than or more than. It's everything to do with putting ourselves in a position of power to change our circumstances and live a life of choice instead of a life of reaction. Right? So let's start to dive into this 
this handout and what's laid out before us. So it says willingness to learn from each moment as opposed to defending ourselves by stonewalling, explaining, justifying, withdrawing, or blaming. Right? So try that on real quick. How often does someone give you feedback? And the whole thing here about openness to learning is, is, being, is seeing feedback as the breakfast of champions. That, you know, I was in this program once for several years where we made a commitment to receive feedback anytime, anywhere, anyhow, from any source, no matter how it's delivered. Right? So they could, they could give you any sort of feedback. And your commitment, my commitment was to receive that feedback. Didn't mean it had to be true. It meant that I would receive it, try it on, without justifying or defending or explaining or withdrawing. I would just say, yeah, thank you for that feedback. I noticed this. I want this. Okay, let's move forward and see what I could learn from that. It was one of the most challenging and rewarding and transformational experiences of my life to sit in, in rooms over and over again with 50 to 100 life coaches, facilitators, therapists who are masters at body language and psychology who could give you feedback anytime, anywhere, anyhow about a gesture you made, a swallow, a, a look, a body posture, a tone of voice, a movement, a, you know, anything. They could give you feedback about anything. And my commitment and each of our commitment was to receive any and all feedback from anybody, no matter how it was delivered. Now, we tend to make excuses. Well, she just, she said it wrong. She needed to say it this way for me to receive it. Or, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to take feedback from him. Look at, he's not blah, blah, blah. Right? So moving beyond the ego, moving beyond the stories, moving beyond needing to feel special. Choosing to receive any and all feedback, no matter what, versus defending ourselves. Explaining, justifying, withdrawing, blaming, etc. So try on, how often have you been given feedback? Maybe about being on time. Maybe about keeping your agreements. Maybe about how you listen or don't listen. Maybe about how you show up in your relationship or your life. And when you receive that feedback, are you actually receiving it? Or are you coming back with this other stuff, like explaining, justifying, withdrawing, blaming, right? How many times do we withhold our love? So someone gives us feedback about how we're showing up, and then we attack them and withdraw our love and, and give them some sort of silent treatment or, you know, some withdrawal of our love and support, right? This is such a critical key. You know, this, this one piece right here, is the number one key to success. You know, because a person could get up, you know, they could go plow forward, not be open to learning, do the same things over and over again, and keep making the same mistakes and falling at the same place. Right? Or they can choose to learn from everything that happens and the speed at which your life will transform, the speed at which you will create the results that you want, the speed at which you will achieve or experience enlightenment, the, the speed at which you will achieve your goals, your dreams, dreams, your aspirations is determined by your openness to learning. If you're too busy being right, you know, it's been said, do you want, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Would you rather be right or would you rather be rich? Right? Would you rather be right or would you rather be close and connected? Would you rather be right or would you rather be successful? Right? So if we can drop the need to be right, which is all rooted from a place of not feeling lovable, feeling fundamentally flawed, feeling like we've got to compensate for the void within our hearts with things, material possessions, beliefs, stories, defenses, justifications, etc. So when we can move beyond all of that, choose to love ourselves as we are, Receive any and all feedback as an opportunity to get more aligned and receive that as a blessing and as a gift to actually appreciate the messenger instead of like, you're a jerk. Why did you say that? You're so mean, right? What if we said, thank you so much for having the courage to give me that feedback. Thank you for loving me enough to have this difficult conversation to help me to get this key life lesson that will help me move forward in a better way. 
right? What if we could find that level of humility? In fact, I've, I've done trainings on what we've been taught humility is, is that it's like beating yourself up, deflecting compliments, acting like you're not important, acting like you don't matter, acting like you're small and insignificant, and being mean to yourself and diminishing and belittling yourself. We've been taught versions of that for humility, most of us. But what I would suggest and have you try on is what if that's not humble at all? What if that's self-abuse? What if that's destructive? What if the perfect combination to create success was unconditional love for self and others, which is true confidence, and then so true confidence and true humility? What if when you combine those two, that gives you the fastest success. That's what I would have you try on because that's what I believe. When I have the highest level of confidence possible combined with the highest level of humility possible at the very same time, we've been taught and trained that these two are in contrast with each other, that you're either confident or you're humble. And I would suggest, no, the most, if you want to be truly successful, you will find a way to be fully confident and fully humble at the same time. How do you do that? It's simple. Love yourself no matter what, just as you are, is the, is the foundation of true confidence. And being an impeccable integrity is what gives you the foundation to do that with. And that don't mean you have to do everything perfect. That means you commit and you recommit over and over again so that you're continuously realigning to your integrity, your truth, your honor. And then from that place, Openness to learning, meaning you're willing and open and you dedicate and yourself and practice the skill and the art of receiving feedback and being open to learning no matter what and receiving feedback from anything and everything that happens in your life and utilizing all of it as your next learning opportunity. That whatever arises, you love that rather than defending, justifying, etc. So this is this is probably the, I mean, it's definitely one of the top, top, most important keys to truly creating a successful life is your ability to become incredibly open to feedback and learning. When I list out anything that I'm, anytime I'm visioning or, or setting goals or whatever, I'm listing out, what do I want? What kind of clients do I want? What kind of relationship do I want? How do I want my relationship with my children to be anything that I'm looking to create, openness to, to learning and feedback is, is very high on the list. It'll be, it's on every single list. I don't want to work with any clients that aren't open to feedback and learning. They're a pain in the butt. I don't want to have people on my business team that aren't open to feedback and learning. They're a pain in the butt. I don't want to, I don't want to relate with anybody <laughs> if I don't have to, if they're not open to feedback and learning because it just makes for drama and, and struggle and chaos. Right? So I invite you to try that on. One, how open to feedback and learning are you? And two, who are you surrounding yourself with and how open to feedback and learning are they? If you'd like to alleviate drama, choose to surround yourself with people who are open to feedback and learning. All right, so here it says, now, willingness to learn from each moment as opposed to defending ourselves by stonewalling, explaining, justifying, withdrawing, or blaming is much more important than factors like IQ, family background, race, or degrees. The great advantage of openness to learning is that you're in charge of it at all times. It's always within your control to shift out of defensiveness into genuine curiosity. Another great advantage is that it cannot be faked. You can feel instantly whether you're genuinely wondering or clinging to a defense. This scale was designed to help you make more graceful shifts out of defensiveness. So this is so key, whether it's a corporate setting, a relational setting, a parenting setting, a friendship, a family of origin issue, whatever the case may be, when we get this piece down, the openness to learning scale, Life works itself out. The drama ends. We, we work effortlessly and easily. We communicate powerfully and clearly. We make direct requests. We receive feedback. 
we adjust accordingly on an ongoing basis and we stay the course. So let's start at negative 10, clear down here at the bottom, and let's work our way up through this scale. And as I read through these, try these on and see which of these feel familiar. Maybe all of them do on varying levels, but notice to what degrees do these feel uh, familiar? You know, where do you engage on this openness to learning scale? So negative 10, creating an uproar or making an abrupt departure. <laughs> I've done this many times. Minus nine, attacking or threatening the messenger verbally or otherwise. And they're done that. Negative eight, blaming someone or something else. A thousand times. Negative seven, righteous indignation, demanding evidence in a hostile manner. I've been there so many times. No, negative six, finding fault with the way the message was delivered. I mentioned this earlier. Well, if you wouldn't have said it this way, how many times have I gone fallen into that trap? Uh, ne negative five, going silent, getting edgy, snappy, or frustrated. Been there, done that. Negative four, justifying why you're the way you are or acted the way you did. Been there, done that. Uh, negative three, interpreting what the person is saying as an attack. Very, very familiar. Negative two, explaining how the person has misperceived the situation. Yep. Negative one, showing polite interest outwardly while inwardly clinging to your point of view and or rehearsing rebuttal. So showing polite interest outwardly. So your body language is acting like you're interested, like, yeah, yeah, cool while inwardly clinging to your point of view and or rehearsing rebuttal. So the key transition move, choosing wonder over defense, committing to learning. So choosing wonder over defense. So the, the typical go-to from the ego is to defend. I must be right, they must be wrong, I must prove this for all of us to be okay, right? But what we want is to shift into wonder. Right? So if we've studied you know, anything uh, in the past from any master, always talking about childlike wonder, being like the child, etc. Right? So the key move that shifts us over into the area of learning versus defending and staying stuck, you know, choosing power over stuckness, is wonder. So try this on for a moment. Figuring something out usually looks something like this. It's like contracted right? Wondering does not look like that. Feel into the body posture of wonder. It's actually very relaxed, very spacious. It includes the breath. It includes some movement. It includes relaxation and a relaxed state of being. When just a genuine curiosity, you may even make the sound, hmm, right, hmm, because right, problem solving takes place in the frontal lobes of the brain, not back here, not in the survival, fight or flight mechanism, up here in the frontal lobes, so, hmm, so try that on right now, out loud, hmm, 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 see if you can feel the vibration go up through your head and actually activate your frontal lobes. So just breathe and relax and step into wonder. It's kind of like when you try really hard to remember something and you can't remember it, and then when you finally give up and all of a sudden it comes clear, that's the difference between figuring something out and wondering into it. So step into that spacious, you know, open body posture, breath, genuine curiosity and wonder that's how we can end wars. That's how we can end arguments. That's how we can end struggle. That's how we can learn and grow and move very rapidly into the success, successful life of our choosing. So positive one, demonstrating open posture. Plus two, expressing genuine curiosity about the issue. Positive three, opening or sorry, openly wondering about the issue. 
plus four, expressing appreciation for the messenger and the message, regardless of delivery. Expressing appreciation for the messenger and the message, regardless of delivery. Plus five, listening generously, able to paraphrase the other person's statements without interjecting your point of view. Plus six, requesting information and examples about the issue. Now, don't mix this one up of, really? How, how, how so? Can you give me an example? Right, that's a lot different than, wow, what I hear you saying is that I, I never keep my agreements. Can you help me see this? Uh, like, I feel like I really have been putting a lot of effort into keeping my agreements, and now I'm hearing this feedback, and I'm genuinely curious. Like, can you remind me and show me what am I doing that's not working? And, you know, if you're willing, let's brainstorm and see what we can come up with. Right, so requesting information and examples about the issue. No, number seven, thinking out loud, making new associations about the issue. Like, hmm, yeah, I can see how I do do that. And here's the deal, guys. No matter what anyone could ever accuse us of in their feedback, no matter what anyone could ever blame us of or call us names about or whatever, it's true. On one level or another, maybe not to the degree that they think it is, but on one level or another, we're, we're all everything. If you've spot it, you've got it. Right, so anything that's in them is in you. Anything that's in you is in them. Uh, and it may even be their stuff. It may not have anything, their feedback may have nothing to do with you. It may completely be a projection on their part. But when we're open to feedback and learning, we don't assess that. We don't, it doesn't matter much. What matters is, hmm, interesting. I received this feedback, I wonder what I can learn from this. Right, because it doesn't matter what's going on for the other person. What matters is what I can, what, what good can I create out of it, right? So no matter what they throw at me, what good can I do with it? So requesting information and examples about the issue, positive seven, thinking out loud, making new associations about the issue. Like, hmm, yeah, I can see how the, in these ways I don't keep my agreements, right? I can see how in these ways I don't listen well. I can see how you would experience me that way because this, this, and this, right? Acknowledging it, right? What a concept. So many of our leaders in today's world make excuses and justify and defend and hide behind their, their reasons, but the key positive, powerful leaders actually take accountability. And it actually is quite rewarding in the marketplace. I watched uh, Elon Musk a few years ago uh, someone drove over a piece of metal or something in the road. It sparked something in the car, punctured into the battery or something, lit the car on fire. And instead of Elon Musk making an excuse about it, he said, wow, yeah, we got to redesign that. That don't work. And uh, so, yeah, we're solving that problem. And uh, while we're at it, we're going to buy that guy a new car at no cost to him. Right? The guy that lost the car, happy. Going to buy another one. Everyone that watched that, instead of, as Tesla stocks declining, Tesla stocks went up as a result of his integrity and his open to feedback, openness to feedback and learning. All right, so positive eight, taking full responsibility for the issue and the results that were created. All right, that's, that's an, I just told a great example of that. Positive nine, feeling and showing genuine enthusiasm about the possibilities, right? So that's like, yeah, I can see how by doing this, 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 and this, I can turn this around and really keep my agreements because keeping my agreements is important to me, especially with you, right? So positive 10, implementing, planning actions, requesting support for follow-up. So that's like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do. You're right, thank you for the feedback. I see this is what's happening, this is what I'm gonna do about it, and I would love you to hold me accountable to this, right? Some version of that, so what if? Just what if we as a, as a society and as a human race got out of our ego consciousness, our ego mind, our defense mechanisms, out of our survival and repeat conditioned patterns, and we chose love, and we chose humility, and we chose true confidence and humility, and from this place, we began creating and interacting with each other just what is possible from this place. Hope you found tremendous value in this training. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have an amazing rest of the week.